Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Continuing the discussion of Vishnu Sahasranam, name 921, which is, who can remember from yesterday? Vita Bhaya, which means fearless. Hmm. Once Srila Prabhupada was asked, what is the symptom of a self-realized person? And Srila Prabhupada immediately replied, he knows no fear. Because this world is the world of fear. So one who is beyond this material influence means beyond fear. And again, the, the first symptom of a person of the divine nature, particularly of a sannyasi, is abhayam, abhayam sattva sang should hear, jnana yoga vivastitihi. No fear. As I uh, mentioned yesterday, there are some things we should be afraid of. <clears throat> we shouldn't be foolhardy. I don't know if you have a word for that in German. Probably there is something similar. <clears throat> Taking unnecessary risks. We may not fear for ourselves, we may fear danger to children, as Yashoda was always afraid. Krishna is going in the forest. Balaram, look after him. You can look after him. <clears throat> she, as was typical in Indian culture until India decided to copy the West in all respects, uh, Yashoda would recite mantras and perform, perform various rituals for the protection of her child. <clears throat> the one thing we should all fear is Maya. As soon as we think that I'm free from Maya, we're in Maya. <laughs> as soon as we think we're an advanced devotee, we're in neophyte devotee. This is how the bhakti yoga, how it, how it works. <clears throat> once, I was told many years ago, once Srila Prabhupada was taking darshan of Radha Landanishra and very intently you could see that he was praying to them and one devotee had the temerity. You know that word, temerity? means boldness, uh, boldness mixed with insolence. To ask Srila Prabhupada, what were you praying? And he said, I was praying to Krishna that I may never fall down. Some days later, that same devotee was present when Srila Prabhupada said, all of you can fall down, but I cannot fall down. And then the devotee asked, but Prabhupada, you said you're always praying never to fall down. So how is that? Prabhupada said, I can never fall down because I'm always praying never to fall down. So take shelter of Vita Bhaya. Take shelter of him uh, who is fearless. This fearlessness comes up uh, again and again. How? We have to be, or we, we should aspire to be fearless, but we can only do so by taking shelter of he who is fearless. And we see that for all the great advancement of society, that we have more fear. That means we're getting more into illusion. I suspect that a generation or two ago, all the people around here, they could go out of their house without, they wouldn't lock the door or any such thing. Nowadays, I doubt it. They're all security systems, CC cameras everywhere, because we can't trust anyone. We can't even trust family members to look after the children. We can't even trust the children. They, they may grow up and rob us of all our money. That is called 
Ah, dasyu, what is that? Swajanakya dasyu, that is mentioned in Bhagavatam. Thieves, or more literally, dacoits, armed, violent thieves, under the name of relatives. <clears throat> so much security then, then. Different kinds of locks, very complex locks. Another kind of fear we have is social fear. The, the fear we need to conform. This is very strong in Germany, that you have to, you, you have to do what everyone says, what everyone else does. Don't be an odd bod. Don't be eccentric. It can be very dangerous uh, if we're trying to live according to principles. And this conformity is very dangerous if we conform to demoniac uh, <clears throat> customs, mores. Uh, an example, yeah, just doing, taking orders, wrong orders. I remember seeing a film called the New, this was made long ago, called the Nuremberg Trials. You can imagine what that is. The, the, uh, the Nazis, those who were caught, were, were tried in Nuremberg for their war crimes. The, uh, the winners of the war, they never get tried for their war crimes. But the losers always get tried. So I just remember one thing from that film. That, no, actually two things, but the one isn't relevant to, to this discussion. How... <sighs> One of the prisoners was said, you did this, you did that, you did this, you did that, crimes against humanity. But he said, I was just following orders. And he couldn't understand why he was wrong for following orders. You have to follow orders. He conformed, but sometimes it's better not to follow orders. Srila Prabhupada writes that the people suffer ultimately more for their sinful activities by following the laws of demoniac governments than they do by breaking. They, they should break the, if you break the law, you'll suffer, the government will punish you. But in many cases, the law is such that by following it, you get punished more by the laws of karma. For instance, I don't know in this country, but in, in Britain, at least until recently, if there is a, a, an old sick cow, then the government-appointed veterinarian officers are supposed to, if the, if the owners, generally they don't get old and sick anyway, they get killed before that, but, well, this happened at Bhaktivedanta Manor. A government-approved veterinarian officer came without permission from the devotees and injected the cow and killed the cow. Euthanasia for the cow. So that was what he's supposed to do, according to the law, but it's very sinful, according to Krishna's law. Security, comfort... Uh, <clears throat> On the other hand, some people like taking risk, especially in youth. It's, it's a thrill. You get an, an adrenaline, adrenaline buzz from taking a risk, which is stupid. Some people make a living by it, and then they die by it. Stuntmen. <clears throat> uh, but ch children very much want security sense of security, cows like it, dogs like it, if they see dogs, if they see, or young children, if they see, if the dog sees the owner in the home, you know, like the, the man and the, they're fighting among themselves, or the children, if they see the parents fighting among themselves, they become disturbed. So it's, it's not, there's no physical threat to the children, but they, uh, there may be no physical threat to the children in that circumstance. 
but uh, they feel disturbed, their, their emotional security, they, they, they feel very comfortable that the world is nice. <laughs> there, there's somewhat of a problem bringing up young children around this age. Yes, thank you for the demonstration, now sit down. <laughs> She's dancing in ecstasy, seeing Narsimha Dev. Good, must have come from the heavenly planets. <coughs> so yeah, there's a prior, it's just at a, a, a devotees farm community in the Czech Republic, where they have a problem with young children like this, that they think that all adults are good and nice. They haven't learned to fear adults, because in the community, all the devotees are good and nice, and they need to learn not to trust everyone. You need to learn to fear. This is the nature of this material world. Risk-taking is part of life, even in Vedic culture. Uh, Kshatriya may take a risk in attacking another kingdom. Of course, he sh unless he's demoniac, he doesn't attack another kingdom generally. But it's his duty to do to attack a, if he's capable of doing so a neighboring kingdom if he sees in the neighboring kingdom that the king there is not ruling properly according to dharma he should do that's his duty so it's a risk vaishyas in business may take a risk that's in a, in an established stable varnashram society that wouldn't be there but that's very much in the present day starting a business is always a risk, and in business, you, there are some very stable businesses, like supplying food <laughs> is generally stable. Of course, you don't know, because the world nowadays is all interlinked. And, uh, <clears throat> but some businesses, they, they, just, they do well for some time, and then the conditions in the world change, and then it's, the business is finished. Just like, for instance, Printing, the whole business changed with computer. So many businesses changed with computerization. And then all these machines became useless, defunct. You don't think it's a risk. It was going on pretty much the same way for, for years. Ah, yeah, I was beginning to update. There was photo typesetting and then computer typesetting and, and now... It's changed. But the, the, the brahmanas may take a risk. You take a risk by uh, taking on, performing yajyas for people. You know, they, they should check very carefully to see if the people are sinless. Otherwise they have to take the sinful reaction. They, who they take charity from, they have to be very careful. They... Uh, may take a risk by taking sannyas. It's a risk. So risk is part of life also. <clears throat> and risk involves fear. It's not that the stunt men don't have fear. If they don't have fear, then they won't concentrate fully. And then they'll, they, they won't be, full focus is required. Uh, so fear is part of life in this world, but excessive fear can really mess our life up. If, we, if, if we're just overcome by fear all the time, <laughs> it is, we, when, we, when we're in a very fearful situation, the heart beats, we may start sweating, the blood pressure goes up, we could have a heart attack or a stroke. Uh, if we're too fearful of mixing people, we're all the time thinking, what will people think of me? Uh, always afraid of your reputation, what people think of you, then you can't mix with others. Uh, you may to This is quite common to... To maintain your prestige, it, it often happens that a family is very rich and they give charity and then their fortunes go down and then they, they want to maintain their status so they take loans and they get into a 
into a whole vortex which they're sucked into because of the fear of losing their prestige. And we may come to hate those who we fear. It's being stoked up. This is maybe controversial, but it's being stoked up in the Western world at the present time. We should hate Russians. All Russians are bad. We should hate them all. It's, it's uh, promoted that we, we should fear, fear the Russians. Uh, a child may be, actually for children to have some fear of their father is good. That's probably not politically correct to say that. But some fear is good because they have to be disciplined and trained how to come up from the status of being a, an egoistic animal, which is basically what a young child is, to that of a, uh, to that of a civilized human being or one who can operate in society. And that requires some training, which requires some discipline. So to be afraid of the parents is uh, good, although nowadays you're not allowed to instill any fear in your children. And in this way, the, uh, the whole society is setting itself up for an even more ghastly next generation. It's hard to imagine what they'll do, but a generation ago we couldn't imagine what they're doing now. So it's Varna Sankara giving birth to Varna Sankara and it's making worse and worse and worse and worse. And then the latest thing is you can't even discipline yet. You can't instill any fear in them. And of course, uh, employees can be afraid of the boss and they hate the boss and you have to smile at the boss and wish he's dead. Uh, another major fear, I, I spoke about that, is a fear of losing your job, losing your income. Uh, in India, it's a big, big thing. The fear of failure. If you fail your exams, not only if you fail your exams, but you have to finish in the top ranking. And of course, not everyone finishes in the top ranks. Heavy, heavy pressure from the, from the parents for the children to succeed, to be a success, to have a... And once you pass your exams, you have to have a good job, which means one that pays a lot of money and doesn't involve physical work. <coughs> uh, so we see that so many students in India, they commit suicide. Often those who are top ranking in the exams because they're under so much pressure, and they're the fear of failure. <sighs> it ruins their life, literally, fear. <coughs> So these are general forms of fear. There is a website called fearof.net and it's, it lists various phobias. A phobia is a fear which is too much. That means everyone has some fear. You may be a afraid to give a public speech. You might be afraid at your first day at work, what's it going to be like? Afraid, some, some fear, trepidation. It's not a severe kind of fear. A different Trepidation means you're a little bit afraid, some anxiety about what's going to happen. Uh, <coughs> so that's healthy for living in this world of danger, but excessive fear to the point that it impacts your life so that you just can't operate properly. And some people, they have these phobias. They're so severe that even thinking of such a situation makes them feel afraid. Not even being in that situation. <clears throat> P 
panic. They may have panic attacks. So in this fear of website, they have what they call the top 100 phobias in the world. I don't know if they actually went all over the world to places like villages in Laos, for instance. But anyway, uh, for many people, the world begins in New York and ends in San Francisco. And there's a little bit over in Hawaii also. Did you notice that when you were in America? Very, very, they, they, they... Right, right, they have the World Series. What is it? And it's a baseball, is it? Something like that. And it's only in America. <laughs> okay, the number one phobia. I'll, I'll try and zip through this, and I might get fed up, or you might get fed up. But just to give some idea, uh, the number one, the name is, uh, I'm glad you all don't know Latin, because I don't either, so I can get away with probably mispronouncing this, is arachnophobia. Right? You all heard of that, right? Well, there is a phobia of long words also. That's coming up. <laughs> the number one is the fear of spiders. Especially women have this fear. I wonder why. I've never been... There are some poisonous spiders, but not many species are poisonous. But they, the bigger ones with all their long legs and their hairy legs, they look pretty nasty. But if you go on this website, you can click on it and it'll give you all the psychological reasons why people are afraid of spiders. But what I think is that people who are afraid of spiders in a recent life, they were a fly caught by a spider. <laughs> really. That's what, I th that's what I think it is. And it must be extremely frightening if you're in a web and you're trying to get, and then you see the spider coming to get you. So that's what I think it is. Another one. Ophidiophobia, the fear of snakes. You don't get that much around here because there aren't many snakes, are there? Huh? You saw a snake. Is it dangerous for humans? No, I heard no. Yeah. But uh, where I've been, I, I spent quite a lot of time in one place in India, South India. During the lockdown, I was there most of the time. Yeah. So many snakes, and really heavily poisonous snakes. So you, you, you have to be careful. It, it just makes sense to be careful in such a situation. But I don't see that people, are, they, they go about their daily work. Time to time you hear someone go, you don't hear people dying much nowadays because they rush them off to the local government clinic and they give them an injection. But it used to be very common in Bengal, in when I was there in the 1970s and 90s, you just hear someone died from snake bite. It's like, you know, someone died from a road accident. And then someone else died. In the cities, you may die from a road accident, or you die from a snake bite. And it's just part of life. Acrophobia, number three, the fear of heights. 5% of the general population suffer from this phobia. Again, it, it, it may be that uh, in a, we hear about the, uh, in one of the hells, you're pushed off from a height and you have to fall down. So I, th I think that's in the subconsciousness and people are, are afraid of that. Mm. Agoraphobia. That sounds something like agori. The, Fear, fearful sadhus in India, but it's, uh, it means the fear of open or crowded spaces. Open spaces. Some people are afraid in open spaces. I, I can't imagine why. Why one should be. Maybe I, I, any suggestions? If I'd have clicked on the website, I would have seen what their psychological explanation of it is. 
And some people, they're afraid to go out from their home. If it's a big open field, they're afraid to be there. It could be also there's a description, this is a bit of a speculation, in the Bhagavatam of one hell where you're on a big, huge copper plate and it's heated from underneath. So, sinophobia, the fear of dogs. Yeah, you could understand being afraid of those. What are they? Rottweiler? Rottweiler? Is that a German breed? Yeah, it makes sense to be afraid of them because from time to time you hear they kill people, right? Uh, being afraid of a chihuahua or a, <laughs> or a poodle. Astrophobia, what does that mean? Fear of going to the moon. <laughs> Becoming an astronaut. No, it's the fear of thunder and lightning. I, I know people, devotees, who have this. It's just like... Again, it may be in a previous life they were struck by thunder or lightning, maybe from Indra directly. Claustrophobia, this is a well-known one. You all know what that means? The fear of being confined in a small space and the people, they don't like to go in lifts, for instance, because it's just too small for them. Mysophobia, the fear of germs, also known as germophobia or bacteriophobia. There was, who is that? Howard Hughes, was it? He was a super rich guy and he was afraid of dying from germs. So he locked himself up in some, it was supposed to be a situation where he, everything was sealed so no germs could come in. And he, he wouldn't meet anyone. He just had a few people coming to deal with his needs and they all had to be fully sanitized and before they came. And of course he died anyway in due course of time. But th there's an example of someone who's, who they, they, <laughs> they messed up their life by, by inordinate fear. Inordinate, you know that word? Who's translating? Inordinate means more than required, excessive. Aerophobia, the fear of flying. That is quite understandable. You're going up in some tin can up in the sky. But then more people die from road accidents than they do from air accidents. It's just more spectacular, generally. The air accidents. Trypophobia, the fear of holes, is an unusual but pretty common phobia. Yeah, again, thrown into a hole. Yes, you may, may have been. That example is given in the Bhagavatam of falling into a hole, a, a well, an, an unused well, which is quite possible in the villages where you have op open wells like this. In Europe, they, they generally make the wells with a walled side in India, the, up to the present day, wells, especially those that are used for agricultural purposes, they're not walled. They may be just in a field. And then if the, if the well dries up and then grass grows all around the edges, then you can't see anything and then you fall in and it's in a field and no one may come and you just slowly die there. So it's a horrible death. So it's a fear of holes. Fear of cancer, carcinophobia. People who have this may go on an extreme diet to avoid it. Well, an extreme diet isn't a bad idea if you have cancer. And it does make sense not to eat poison, right? Unlike most people in the world today, because the food is full of poison. There was one devotee, he was, he was from Spain, he lived in India for many years, and he got this whole thing. He thought, all the food is poisonous, so I'm not going to eat anything. And he stopped eating. They died. <laughs> he became so afraid of food, maybe that's coming up, that one. 
Thanatophobia, fear of death. It just, just, again, fear of death is required, but to be all the time just <laughs> afraid, that's a phobia. Glossophobia, when you're called to speak in public or even to a small group of people, you just be freeze up and start sweating. Uh, monophobia, the fear of being alone. I would think there'd be more fear from not when you're in company of others. But the fear of being alone. Maybe it could be a child is get separated from the parents and they become frantic. And that can go on to later life also. Atikiphobia, the fear of failure. I, I spoke about that, that before. Ornithophobia, fear of birds. That may be certain species also. And again, it may be you are a worm happily minding your own business and suddenly you got pulled out. You must have all seen that, right? The, the thrush or the blackbird. I haven't seen it for many years, but it was a very common thing. They, they poke their head in, in the soil and pull up. They pull up a, a worm. So they look very nice. They may sing very nicely, but the whole material world is full of violence. Jivo jivasya jivanam. So fear of birds. Electrophobia. This, this is going to make you laugh. The fear, <laughs> the fear of chickens. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why anyone should be afraid of chickens. But some people should be. I mean, that Colonel Sanders, he should be afraid. Because up to the present time, every chicken that's killed in his name means more bad karma for him. Inoclophobia, fear of crowds. Aphenphosmophobia, the fear of intimacy, the fear of becoming close and touching someone's body. Trypanophobia, the fear of needles. Yes, yeah, some people pull out the uh, either vaccine or it can be or putting some something in the body or taking out blood, and people. They become so afraid. Anthrop anthropophobia, fear of people. And we had monophobia, the fear of being alone, and then the fear of being with people. Aquaphobia, being afraid of water. Some people, they just get close to some body of water, like a lake, and they become afraid. Unreasonably, you can say. But again, it must have been in a previous life they had some experience in which they were drowned and it stuck in their, in their consciousness. Autophobia, the fear of abandonment. Someone may be in an abusive relationship, but they remain within it because they just can't countenance the thought of being abandoned by the other person. Hemophobia, that's again linked with the needles, the fear of blood. Even the sight of blood can cause someone to faint. Recently I was had this uh, blood test and the woman who was taking it, she she was very concerned that, are you sure? Are you sure you're going to be all right? Yeah. And then taking out the blood, because you see the blood as it comes out. And then when I stood up, she was very ready to catch me in case I fainted. I, she, she, I guess she gets a lot of cases of people who are just traumatized by the... By the uh, by blood. 
gamophobia, the fear of commitment. What will happen if I, I, if I commit myself? You don't never want to commit yourself to anything because you just don't trust your others or you don't trust yourself enough to stick with it. Okay, now for hippopotamonstrosesquipedaliophobia, which is <laughs> the fear of long words. <laughs> and it's not a joke. According, this is from psychologists. They say that someone, if they hear a long word and they become afraid that someone might understand, I don't know what it means, or they might expect me to say it and I can't pronounce it, and they become fearful. Xenophobia, this is a fairly common term. You know what that means? What does it mean? It's generally, it's generally presented as being a fear of foreigners, but it's the fear of the unknown. Something, di something different. I don't want to get into it. It's, it's yeah, no, it's, it's taken on that connotation of fear. What will happen if all of Africa decides to settle in Yandelsbrunn? Everyone from Africa finds out there's a Hare Krishna temple. They give good food. Let's go. What will happen? Stop giving away free food, because if you give away free food, everyone in Africa might come here. And then what will we do? That's called unreasonable fear. Vehophobia, fear of driving. Yeah, cars are very dangerous, actually. To be zipping around in a tin can at 50, 60, 70, 80 and more kilometers an hour. It's very dangerous. It used to be on the autobahn there was no speed limit. Is that still there? Used to be. Was it? Some, some parts of the autobahn. Still. Whew. I don't like to go very fast in cars. It's a thrill, but it's... Speed thrills but kills. Basiphobia, the fear of falling. That must be related to the fear of heights. But some people, they fear for falling. I suppose it, if, you, if you have a poor sense of balance, which often happens with older people, then they become, a, even to stand up, you lose your balance. Achievemiphobia, the fear of success. It's hard to imagine because we promote so much success, success, success. It is actually worth fearing because uh, success can really mess you up in your relationships and how you, how you perceive yourself, become puffed up. Theophobia, fear of God, that is promoted in Christian religion, especially in Protestant Christian religion. Amazingly, on this website, they say the fear of God causes an irrational fear of God or religion. But mostly these psychologists, they're all atheists, so for them, any belief, any belief in God is irrational. So, yeah, it's in. Oh, I see. Ha, 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 ha. There are two ways of taking this. One way is that to take it that even to believe, to have any fear of God is irrational. And another way of taking it is that you shouldn't fear God. It's irrational to fear God because God's actually good. But anyway, fear of religion. Ailurophobia, the fear of cats. Well, they do pop up in horror movies, right? Cats, especially black cats, riding on the back of the broom with the witch. 
metathesiophobia, the fear of change. Globophobia, the fear of balloons. But th this is a this is a genuine website from psychologists, and it's actually a phenomenon: the fear of balloons. Maybe they go pop. It's hard to imagine. You can look it up if you like. I didn't bother. Nyctophobia, the fear of darkness, common in children. It made some adults they also have that. Probably don't have that much nowadays because everything is lit up by electric lights. Phobophobia. Oh wait, wait. Androphobia, the fear of men. In particular, not people, not humans in general, but particularly men. Phobophobia, the fear of being afraid. I guess that could be endlessly extended, the fear of being afraid of being afraid. The fear of the fear of the fear of being afraid. It could be extended on and on. People are nuts. That's the purport of all this. Triskaidekaphobia, the fear of the number 13. Yeah, it's quite common. In, maybe not nowadays, but it used to be quite common. Hmm? Oh, I did? Oh, emetophobia, the fear of vomiting. <laughs> You'll lose your self-control. Wait a minute, what did I skip? Oh, philophobia, the fear of love. Well, that's a good one. Fear, being afraid of becoming too emotional. Should be Mr. Spock and not fall in love. The fear of the number 13. You don't have that in Jordan, huh? Fear of the number 13, that's a Christian thing, I think, isn't it? Because Jesus, he was killed on the day 13th, was it? Is that the reason why 13 is unlucky? Supposed to be? Friday the 13th. Friday is unlucky, right? 13th is unlucky. You don't, you, you don't have that in, in Islamic culture. Oh, there's a movie about oh about Jesus being oh there's so many movies about that. Okay, what is it? Emetophobia, the fear of vomiting. Gephryphobia, the fear of bridges. You're crossing over a bridge and you're afraid it'll collapse, which is unwarranted in almost all cases. <coughs> Entomophobia, the fear of not only spiders, but all kinds of nasty little creepy crawlies. Lepidopterophobia, the fear of butterflies and all winged insects. Panophobia, pan gives the idea of everything, right? So the fear of everything or fear that any time something terrible can happen. Podophobia, the fear of feet. And we want to take shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. Some people fear touching or looking even at their own feet. Oh, here we go, 13. Paraskevidekatriophobia. I wonder if any, uh, yeah. I wonder if psychologists have to learn all these terms. Anyone studied psychology? Just like in uh, medicine, the first thing you have to learn is the name of every single every single bone in your body on all Latin terms. That's for starters in medicine. So paraskevidekatriophobia is the fear of Friday the thirteenth. About eight percent of Americans have this phobia. Is it a phobia or they, they just become they just presume something terrible can happen on Friday the thirteenth. They become they become dysfunctional. And in South Africa. On Friday the thirteenth. That's well that's because of Christianity, right? They didn't have it prior to becoming civilized. In other words, becoming Christians. Somniphobia, the fear of sleep. This is a really, the fear of sleep, 
with the fear that you might not wake up again or you might have a nightmare. I had that, uh, well, not, not a phobia, but I had at one point in my life, I, I, I didn't want to go to sleep because I kept on getting cramps in the night, which was so painful. I thought it's better not to sleep. But people, they, they may have a phobia, they get repeated nightmares, they're afraid to go to sleep, or they're afraid they'll die. Okay, we had androphobia, the fear of men. And we have gynophobia, the fear of women. Yeah, get back at them. Get back at them women. <laughs> May occur if you have unresolved mother issues, they say. Okay, apiphobia, the fear of bees. Yeah. It's a good fear to have, but not, not excessively. There is a possibility that you could just walk out and be attacked by a whole, what are they called, swarm of bees and killed. But it's not very likely. The next two are really strange. Komponophobia, the fear of buttons. And the next one is anatidaiphobia, the fear of ducks. <laughs> Huh? You may have been a slug in a previous life and gobbled up by a duck. Somewhere a duck may be watching you. Big duck is watching you. Pyrophobia, the fear of fire. Don't become a fire person. Not a fireman, right? Fire person. If you're afraid of fire. Ranidophobia, fear of frogs, often caused by episodes from childhood. You're attacked by a giant frog in your childhood. <laughs> I don't know, but frogs, they, they consume a lot of living beings. So, again, if you're an insect, you got eaten by a frog. And the frog gets eaten by the snake. Galeophobia, the fear of sharks is such that some people are afraid even to go in swimming pools, even though they can see there's no shark in it. That's stupid, isn't it? Atazagoraphobia, the fear of being forgotten, or not remembering things. Katsaridaphobia, the fear of cockroaches. Anyone has a fear of cockroaches? No? You have? I, I've, I, I don't think you get big cockroaches, what do they call them? Flying dates, right? You know, they, they look like dates and they, they fly sometimes. They're, they're very, about the size of a date, a big one. So you only get tiny cockroaches in this part of the world. You don't get big ones. Huh? So I, I've seen devotees come from the West and come to India and they're, they're, they're afraid of cockroaches. They, they look nasty, but they're not uh, not really dangerous. Spread germs. Iatrophobia, fear of doctors. Yeah, not a bad idea. Uh, mm, yeah, you, you may be afraid to go to the doctor because he may tell you, uh, by the way, uh, everything's fine except that you have terminal cancer. They were afraid they're going to tell you something terrible. Or it may be that they may do something terrible to you. It's because usually they say, well, take this medicine and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, then try something else. I saw my mother. Uh, I go to, she was in hospital. I go to see her in a mental hospital. I go to see her every week. And she'd be a different person each week according to the drugs they gave her. Just, I don't know, playing around with her or something. Pidiophobia is a fear of dolls. Ichthyophobia, fear of fish, including dead fish. That would be good for Bengalis and stop eating fish. Small, large, dead and living fish. Achondroplasiophobia, fear of midgets. You don't get midgets anymore in Germany probably. They probably kill them in the womb, right? When they see, they don't get out. 
Motephobia, fear of moths, zoophobia, fear of animals, banana phobia, fear of bananas. <laughs> that, yeah, that could be fearful. But actually, people are afraid of bananas, and it's hard to imagine. And if you if you laugh at them, you wouldn't be being empathetic. Sidon globophobia, the fear of cotton balls or plastic foam, cellophobia, the fear of crime, excessive fear that someone's going to attack you. Cyberphobia, the fear of food. People may be afraid to eat. If you, you may have a choking incident. It's fairly common that people, they, they, they eat fish and they, those tiny bones get caught and they start choking. You can die from that. So people may have a bad experience. or Some people, when they eat, then they get pain in their stomach. And so they become so afraid of eating that it becomes a phobia. Pasmophobia, the fear of ghosts. That probably goes along with the fear of the dark. Equinophobia for horses. Musophobia, the fear of mice. That's quite common, isn't it? And in women especially. Catopotrophobia, the fear of mirrors. Agliophobia, the fear of pain. You avoid all kinds of risk because you're afraid some pain. Tocophobia, the fear of pregnancy. For all the pain and the or whatever. Tele telephonophobia, the fear of talking on the phone. Pogonophobia, the fear of beards. You don't like to be around bearded men. <laughs> Omphalophobia, the fear of belly buttons. <laughs> oh, here's another one. There's pseudodysphagia, the fear of choking. After, yeah, so I said the fear of food. Bathophobia, the fear of anything deep. So that's probably related to uh, fear of heights, but even afraid to go in a dark tunnel, fear of a deep lake or caves. Cacomorphobia. Some people who are anorexic, they don't like to eat. If you have the fear of food, you become anorexic, and then you become afraid of fat people. Gerascophobia, the fear of getting old. Chaitophobia, the fear of hair. Well, hair can be very dangerous, actually. It's used in black magic. So, things like that. Hair, cut nails. Nosocomephobia, the fear of hospitals. Mm, yeah, Lig ligorophobia, the fear of loud noises. It's natural if there's some unexpected explosion and you hear that that you, you oh, what's that but just uh, as a phobia you just become overcome by that that's lig ligyrophobia did us kalinophobia the fear of school no one to go to school. There may be a whole bundle of reasons why. Maybe you're getting bullied at school or you're failing at school or whatever. Technophobia, the fear of technology. I don't know if they, they, these psychologists are calling it a phobia. It's, they say that this technophobia is often induced by culture and religion. So they take it as a psychological disorder. But it's, it's not a bad thing to have, that we keep out technology as much as possible. I'm saying as I'm sitting in front of some camera here with all the lights on. But uh, fear, or, or not exactly fear, but a, a disdain of, or a, a recognition of the bad effects it has. Chronophobia, fear of the future. 
not bad at the present time as the things in the world are getting worse and worse and the speed of it getting worse is speeding up all the time. Fear of the future. That's a tough one because you can't stop it coming on, can you? Sphexophobia, fear of wasps. Ergophobia, <laughs> fear of work. You can apply to the government. I can't work, I have ergophobia. Give me money. But then they'll send you off to get some special medicine to mess, you, mess, mess your mind up. Cholerophobia, the fear of clowns. Olodoxophobia, the fear of opinions. Being afraid of hearing what others are thinking about you. Samhainophobia, the fear of Halloween. It's hard to think of it as such a phobia that you become completely mm, disoriented. Photophobia, the fear of light. Disposophobia, the oh, this is quite common. The fear of disposing of things. That means you get a, you get something delivered by Amazon in a box, and you keep the box and you keep the packing, and you keep everything. You never throw away anything. And people's homes get full of garbage, so they can't even move in them hardly. It's quite a common syndrome. But that, that is some kind of a psychological disorder. Numerophobia, the thought of calculating numbers, fear of numbers. Om ombrophobia, fear of rain. Coasterophobia, the fear of roller coasters. Yeah, well, that, the, the, the idea is to make you afraid, right? That's why people go on them. They get this feeling of being afraid. Thalassophobia, the fear of the ocean. Yeah, can be dangerous. Even scolexiphobia, the fear of worms. Kynomortophobia, the fear of zombies. Myrmocophobia, the fear of ants. And one of the most common is number 100. So this is the end of this list, although more than four, they've identified more than 400. Tapophobia, the fear of being buried alive by mistake and waking up in a coffin underground. This is among the most common phobias. So they say. Okay, let's get on to some things more directly spiritual. Parashra Bhatta, the... Original Sri Vaishnav commentator on Vishnu Sahasranam is describing the series of names that we are now discussing uh, in respect to Gajendra Moksha, how the Supreme Lord delivered Gajendra. Prasha Bhatta says that Vita Bhaya, Vitam Bhayam Yasmat Savita Bhaya. Not only is he himself free from fear, but this interpretation means that he drives away fear from the heart of his devotees. Everything he does is for the sake of his devotees. So, Gajendra, when he saw the Lord coming so swiftly and so ardently, fully focused on delivering him, immediately Gajendra, still in the clutches of the crocodile, became relieved from fear, just by the arrival or the seeing him come. Another a, a contemporary Sri Vaishnav, Velukudi Krishnan, he explained that Gajendra was afraid that the lotus flower he was holding up to offer to the Lord might become withered. That was his fear. And as soon as he saw that Bhagwan had arrived to accept the offering of the lotus flower, this fear vanished. <clears throat> uh, another Sri Vaishnav commentator, V. V. Ramanujan, says that Gajendra had called for help from Narayana. And he was afraid that if Narayana did not come immediately, then his fame as being the protector of the surrendered souls 
might become questioned. And he was relieved from this fear as soon as Bhagavan arrived. Baladev Vidya Bhushan, the Gorya Vaishnav commentator on Vishnu Sahasranam, gives the same meaning. Vitam means vinashtam gajendra sya grahat bhayam yena sa vita bhayaha. He who relieved Gajendra of the fear of being gripped by the crocodile is Vitabhaya. So, in summary, he, Krishna, Vishnu, is the Supreme Lord. He has no fear of any kind. And all others who are not sheltered by him are afraid of him. All fear is ultimately a fear of punishment, by him, whose one name we find in Vishnu Sahasranam is Danda. He is punishment. He is completely fearless. He's free from all types of fears. He frees his devotees from fears, all kinds of fears. We went through a whole bunch of fears, fear of butterflies, fear of ducks, fear of darkness, fear of open places. But whatever kind of fear there is, becomes dispelled by simply even by remembering Vishnu. And among the benefits of Vishnu Sahasranam stated in its Fala Shruti at the end it gives the benefits. Among the benefits is hearing and reciting Vishnu Sahasranam removes one from all fear. Hare Krishna. Any questions about this? Don't ask me about psychology because I don't know okay yeah what's the question please oh there's so many hands popping up all right let's go by seniority here in Jai Sachinandan Prabhu please put the mic we've seen that oh, Hare Krishna. we've seen that the devotee community lately last whatever 10 years the devotees are uh, very much, as you said, they don't want to eat poisonous food, so they try to take care of their health. But sometimes this taking care of health is a little bit extreme. So is this also indirectly a sign of a fear of death that we want to, or fear of disease, it, it, or some the, kind of fears? You have to see the uh, individual. Fear of death, maybe. Or they they want they don't want to die early because they have some things they want to do in Krishna's service. So they want to remain long enough to do that. That may be. Otherwise, to prolong life unnecessarily, when you when you've done what you have to do, then you you can go. Nothing more to do. I've seen people, and they just say that. There was one person, I was told, they were apologizing to their relatives, and I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I just, I'm just causing you problems. I should, but what can I do? <laughs> it's just old, like this. I, I think the devotees, of course, it, organic food is a little more expensive, but, well, especially in, in America and India where you have to pay for health care, most people then, in, in the long run, it makes sense. Why, why should you eat poison? Doesn't make sense. Yeah. Organic food. You should grow, yeah. You have so much land. You just mentioned shortly being afraid of Maya and <coughs> Srila Prabhupada, as far as I understand, he said this, that my disciples have one fault that they're not enough afraid of Maya. Yeah, my, yeah one second. And it, it, it's said that Srila Prabhupada said that a fault, one time he said that the fault, one fault of my disciples is they don't read my books. Another time he said, or it said that he said that the, my disciples are not afraid enough of Maya. Yeah, good. So, so, and 
maybe that's my limited perspective, there seems to be no end to how much we should be afraid of Maya and and there's also no end to our foolishness. Yeah, but we, we can cross over death by taking shelter of Krishna. Mm. And so why are we lacking in fear of Maya? You tell me. Why are you not afraid enough of Maya? Because I'm in Maya. Ah, there you are. How do you get out of Maya? Huh? The question is, how do you get out of Maya? Then you have to follow the process. Purifying process. The process of or the process that Srila Prabhupada gave us, he, in his letters he emphasized again and again and again devotees should rise early, chant 16 rounds, attend Mongolati, chant 16 rounds, study the books, again and again, take only Krishna prasadam, again and again and again he emphasizes. This will protect you from Maya. Hmm. So, Ah. But if we are not afraid of Maya, then we don't see the necessity. Well, if we, if we apply ourselves to the process, then definitely we're going to hear about why we should be afraid of Maya. Because hearing is the first in spiritual activities. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnosma. Shravan comes first. So Shravan is not only hearing about Krishna Leela, but hearing about our existential position from Bhagavad Gita. Hmm. Then? <coughs> Maharaj, you also mentioned this yesterday that uh, how to become fearless is actually by uh, how to get rid of this fear by to chant Hare Krishna. And uh, I remember the uh, story where Prabhupada was asked, how do you feel when you are chanting Hare Krishna? And Prabhupada said, I feel fearless. So, but this is not really actually my experience while chanting. Yeah, well, you're not Prabhupada, are you? We have to come to that stage. I mean to say the, exactly the opposite. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a gradual process. Mm -hmm. So how to understand like this fear or anxieties that are coming during chanting? How to understand the, like is this kind of a purification? The clearing process. In, in cleaning up a dirty place, we may bring out so much dirt that we, wasn't, we were not even aware it was there. So when we start to chant Hare Krishna, so many dirty things in the heart may become revealed, which we didn't even know was there. It's all part of the cleaning process. So, anything else? Hmm. Hare Krishna, uh, we said that um, a devotee should fear Maya, and within this name, we actually, as devotees, we have a lot of fears, like the fear of not being able to follow the order of spiritual master, the fear of not being able to follow the vows, uh, maybe the fear for the future, of our devotee community. Um, so, um, Anxiety in relation to Krishna is spiritual anxiety. Yes, I wanted to ask, these fears are uncomfortable, but they seem different to me because they, they can are, because get us closer with Krishna. To Krishna. That's purifying. Mm. It helps us to be released from material fears. Yes, I was just going to ask you to elaborate on this. Yeah, if we're in anxiety about Krishna, then we won't be in anxiety. For Krishna's service, we won't be in anxiety ab about our material position, prestige, and so on. Transfer our anxiety from material anxiety to Krishna anxiety. There's a purport by Srila Prabhupada, he mentions about this. 
I believe that's in the Dhammada Lila, he mentions this, how we should transfer our anxiety. As like Mother Yashoda was anxious for Krishna, so we should transfer our anxiety from mundane anxiety, which binds us in the material world, to Krishna anxiety, which transfers us to the spiritual world. Anything else? Yeah? Maybe, did you hear before, is there a fear of facing Krishna? The fear of facing Krishna? Of letting go of Maya and really, now it's, now it's the time I have to surrender. No? Yeah, well, many devotees have that, right? What, what, will, what will happen if I let go? There's one story from Australia. This is that's mentioned in that book, the Great Transcendental Adventure. That's a book by Koma Prabhu about Krishna consciousness in the 1960s and 70s in Australia and New Zealand, while Prabhupada was there. And there's one anecdote: the devotees were making a canopy for for Jagannath's wrath for the upcoming Rathiyatra. They were in the temple making it and they heard some commotion from the street and a few buildings up. The building was on fire. And uh, so the devotees ran out with the canopy and held it and it was, it was an office building and the women were at work and they told them to jump. So one after another they jumped and they were saved. But the one woman at last, she was afraid to jump. And eventually they convinced her to jump. So jumping is fearful. Even though she saw the canopy had supported so many other women, she was afraid to jump. But on the other hand, the fire is coming up behind you. And if you don't jump, you're going to get burned to death. So we may be something like that. that we're, we know we have to surrender to Krishna, but we're afraid to make that big jump. So then we can ask Krishna to turn the heat up. <laughs> Vipada santu ta shashvat tatra tatra jagat guru bhavato darshanam yat syad apuna bhava darshanam Do you know this verse? Hmm? First canto? Yeah, you know this. Good. Kunti, who had just listed some of the main dangers that she and her sons had faced in life, said to Krishna, give us more danger. Who prays like that? Who dares to pray like that? Give us more danger because the more dangers we have, the more we will think of you and see you and by seeing you we'll no long, we will no longer see repeated birth and death. If you dare to pray like that, we can go through the fire of ordeal. Bhaktisthan Sarasvai Thakur used that term, the fire of ordeal, by which we can become quickly purified and go back to Godhead. So yeah, we may be afraid. We, we're attached to our, to the, we, we've, we have a sense, we have a false sense of security in my present position in the, in, in the material world. But we have to let go of that. Another story, the, the men carrying stones. You know that story? Oh, there are two sides of the river. You can, you can cross the river fairly easily by walking through it. On one side, people are living very happily, no anxiety, and on the other side, there are people who they have a culture of carrying big bags of stones on their back. And the more stones you can carry, the more heavyweight, the more prestigious you are. So they walk around bent over all the time with self-inflicted suffering because that's prestigious to carry a lot of stones. And sometimes some of them wander to the bank of the road. This story appeared in Back to Godhead, by the way, in the 1960s, I believe. Written by uh, Puda, the Gita Press. I can't remember his name now, full name. 
Uh, so time to time, some people on they may come to the edge of the river and see the uh, people on the other side. People on the other side, hey, come and join us! It's wonderful over here. But you're not carrying stones. Yeah, it's great without stones. Just come on over. But if I go, I'll, I'll uh, the force of the river. I can't walk in the river because unless I get rid of my stones, because the river current is too strong. You can come easily. Just give up the stones and you can cross. No, no. Give up my stones? How can I give up my stones? So they never cross the river because they're afraid of giving up their stones and all they're attached to and all that they think gives them happiness. But it's just a burden. So you can understand the Hanuman Prasad Poda. That was his name. He wrote that article. That story came. So that's our situation. We're attached to that which not only is no good to us, but is harmful to us. We just let it go, we can cross over. Taroha e bhava shindhure. What is that? Bhajahure mana srinanda nandana abhaya charana arvindare. Worship Krishna, who, uh, uh, his lotus, fearless lotus feet. Durlava manava janama satsange taroha e bhava shindhure. In this rare human birth by association with devotees, we can cross over the ocean of repeated birth and death. Hare Krishna. Any other question, comment, protest? I read that Prabhupada said that your real spiritual progress is shown when you are in a stressful situation. So when you realize or experience that in, under stress you act not proper, but not nice. So, how can how how do you learn to handle a stressful situation and stay cool or something? What is the question? I couldn't probably follow it. Prabhupada said that if your real spiritual progress is shown when you are under stress, when you are in a stressful situation. Oh. So, when you realize that when you understand. When, when I, re I realize that when I'm in stress, I, I act not as I should act sometimes. Mm. Well, I guess we all have some more way to go, huh? Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Vita Bhaya Bhagavan Ki Jai Hare Krishna